Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. It is right after Winter Storm Elliot. It's a mess out there, so I am staying in here to share all of the new computing fantasticness with you. This is the Innovato, Innovato, Innovato Quadra. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. This thing is nine centimeters square, and it's about yay tall. It's a pretty neat little machine. It is Raspberry Pi 3 performance, compatible, but I think you'll be surprised. With this, you get just about everything you need to get online. It's got an internal EMMC storage solution, so you don't need an SD card. It does have an SD card slot though, so you can put whatever OS on it that you want. It has USB 3, USB 2, HDMI, RJ45 for ethernet, built-in Wi-Fi. It's got a bunch of awesomeness baked into it. The coolest part about this, number one, you can, so maybe there's two cool things about it. Number one, you can get this thing for $29.95. That's a fantastic price, especially considering that the last Raspberry Pi I bought was a 02W and it was $105. It hurt. The other one is they're in stock. You can get them and they're in stock. So case comes included with it. You can get a four port USB hub to go along with that. It comes with the HDMI cable. It comes with the power cord. Thing is pretty sweet. Let's get it over to the bench and open it up and see what it's about. All right. Oh, nice. Let's see what's in the we got a padded mailer inside of a padded mailer. Like it. Belts and suspenders, man. Okay, we have... If I can get the stupid thing open. USB cable? Nah, HDMI cable. Nice. And then we have a power brick. Five volts. Two amps. Looks like a 5521 plug on it. Innovato, thank you for your order and we hope you enjoy your new Innovato Quadra. Nice. Oh, that's tiny. Nice case. Made in China, where everything is made these days. All right, so we've got power in, we've got USB, we've got ethernet, we've got HD, we've got AV, we've got USB 3. There's an SD card slot, which is empty. Any way to get inside this thing or I gotta, I gotta tear it apart. I gotta get, I bet it's under these feet. Oh, yep, there it is, it's under the feet. All right, we're going in. I got my iFixit toolkit, not to be confused with my iBreakIt toolkit. Oh, fairly good construction inside, and it's screwed down again. I gotta unscrew it some more. We have a heat sink there, nice. Big heat sink there. Wonder what upgrade would have gone there. Very nice, very nice. I never noticed that before. The HDMI port is actually smaller than the USB port. Infrared port and LED. And the LED is shielded so it doesn't trigger the infrared port, nice. So I'm guessing that this was designed as a media center in mind with that infrared port. Just one of the many uses for something like this. I do not see any GPIO, but there's another header right here for something. I think it's square, so it doesn't matter which direction it goes back in, but I wanted to do the one that made sense. Well, I guess there's really just not much reason to get inside the case in the first place, because we already know all the specs. All right, I'm gonna get it all set up and ready to do its first boot magic, and we will be right back with a new screen design. Okay, I think I got it all set up. Let's plug it in for the first time. It's lit up. Oh, there we go, arm bin, nice. It always looked like this. What are you talking about? All right, the default password is 1N0V at T0. Don't tell anybody. Make that a bit bigger for all of us. Pretty nice. So it comes with a version of 
what looks like XFCE installed by default. Let's see if we can get on Wi-Fi. Does it have a Wi-Fi built in? And we are connected, nice. All right, so down here we have Firefox installed, Abbey Word, Numeric, GIMP, Spotify, the Mate Calculator, or is it Mate or Mate? Pi Apps, Raspberry Pi App Store, nice. My home folder, Flameshot, powerful yet simple to use screenshot editor. Volume controls, minimize all open windows, trash can, terminal. System monitoring center, multi-featured system monitoring center. This is the first one I haven't seen yet. Oh, look at that, it's pretty. And then settings manager, graphical settings manager for XFCE. I'm gonna go out to a terminal and then we're gonna make that full screen, make it big enough so everybody can read it. Sudo dash I. Oh, we gotta type that password in again. One N zero V at T zero. So elite. All right, apt update. They've got their own app repository in here. Okay, let's do apt upgrade. Get them all upgraded. It's one of the things you should always do right out of the gate when you get a new computer is get all the latest system patches on it so you're safe and secure. Unless, of course, you have some reason not to. But most of the time, I don't have a reason not to do that. It's pretty cool that it's multi-threading Firefox and some other updates at the same time. Evolution, looks like it's got all your common desktop apps on it. We saw email, word processing, spreadsheets, web browser, VLC, video playing, nice. All right, she's all done with that. Ooh, RBN, nice. All right, RBN 2208, Annex TX6 is the host. Sun Z64, uptime nine minutes. Took nine minutes to do all the app updates. Four core, 1.7 gigahertz, and two gigs of RAM. Not bad. Let's see what Sys Sysbench has to say about this thing. I'm going to install WSJTX on this thing and get it on the air. Oh, Braille TTY. Yep, I've seen this before. Sudo apt remove Braille TTY. And we're getting signals, we're getting decodes. Time looks good. I didn't even set the clock. It did that all by itself. Let's make a contact. Got him. You saw all of the fantasticness that was inside. Pretty well built inside. It's a, it's a single PCB inside of a plastic case. You really can't go wrong there. Runs all of our favorite ham apps just fine. I'm thinking, leave a comment down below if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that WSJTX is probably the hardest ham app to run on a computer not the hardest app to run on a computer, just the hardest ham app to run on a computer because it's relatively demanding with all of its fast foyer transforms and waterfall display and decoding multiple signals at once and so on and so on. The transmission's pretty easy, but it's all the decoding stuff I think is pretty difficult. There is a problem, not really a problem, it's with Ubuntu. They install Braille TTY by default, which captures all of your serial ports, so when you plug your radio in, you lose cat control right away. Uninstall Braille TTY, Replug in your radio and you are good to go. That's what I had to do there. There was a little bit of a hiccup there. Performance was pretty good. I am very happy with this thing. And I think at the size and the weight of this thing, we can drop it right into a go bag with a handy talkie and a digi rig or a modern radio with a built-in USB sound card can plug directly into this thing and you can bury this in the pouch and Bluetooth keyboard and Wi-Fi built in. So you can just kind of forget that it's in there. My buddy Thump made a juice box which has a five volt buck converter and a couple of Anderson power poles in it so you can run this thing right off of your regular ham radio battery solution. There's a video right over here about how to build that juice box so you can power your radio and your Innovato Quadra all off of the same 
battery system. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.